What up, dude? And welcome to Lunchtime Detroit Lions Talk, brought to you by Detroit Lions on the Prowl and Lions Nation Unite. It's your man, Kurt Still. Today is Tuesday, October 18th, 2022, on deck for today's show. LL discusses how Levi Anzarike's season is over after surgery last week. I look at how the Lions open at seven-point underdogs versus the Cowboys, and Coach Mike wants to know, do you think the Lions can still win seven or more games, or even six? Before we get into all that, man, it's time to bring in the rest of the crew. Man, it's the big-time player. El Guapo from Yaktown, man. It's my man, LL Cool Torrance. What's going on, my guy? Was am, Proud Nation, and good morning. Man, and y'all know who he is because he's a Wolverine on Saturday, and he's a Lion on Sunday. And, hell, you talk to him on Friday, he's a Mountain. <laughs> What's my man who? It's the Wolver Lion, Coach Mike Jones. What's going on, Lion fans? Let's get this thing started. Right now. Let go. It's to Lions talk, baby. Welcome back to the show, people, man. Uh-oh, I hear it. Wait a minute. I'm getting the feedback in the mic. Hold on. In the airplane. Wait a minute. So really happened. L, 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 L. Man, you hear the chat? It's the man. L, L, cool. Torrance going to talk about the Lions 2021 second round pick season is now over. What you got, LL? I thought you was going to say something. I thought something really was happening. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, man. Uh, yesterday, um, you know, perusing the internet and seen the um, bad news, uh, well, a little bit of bad news about, um, you know, a player that I had high hopes for this year, or some hopes for, not necessarily high hopes, but some expectations for this year. And that's Levi Onzerike, our second round pick, just like Kurt just said from last year. Um, yeah, uh, I don't, this probably isn't heartbreaking to a lot of people. It's not really heartbreaking to me, but it is. You know, a little bit like it makes me sad because in my mind, like his time in Detroit is probably over with. Um, we got one season out of him. Um, he played in, I don't know if he played in all 16 games, but, you know, throughout the season, you know, he had his times where he came on. He did miss some time as well. But it's one of those things um, he's going to miss the rest of this season uh, due to back surgery, if I hadn't said that already. Sorry about mm -hmm. that. But like we mentioned before on this show, um, and you've heard it everywhere else too, you know, Sometimes when you get those back injuries, it just never straightens back out. Um, I, unfortunately, well, fortunately, I've never necessarily had too many back issues, but I, my brother um, has had back issues since we were, you know, uh, teenagers. And, yeah, you know, it's not really good. It came, it came, like, he ended up having to have, like, complicated surgeries and all types of stuff. So the back is a real, real, real delicate, sensitive thing, man. You got to take care of it. So, yeah, um, it, it, this surgery, uh, he was already on injury reserve anyway, but this surgery ends his season. And like I mentioned just a little while ago, um, I think it probably ends his time here in Detroit. Whether it be by cutting or we trade him away or whatever it is. But yeah, we, you know, damaged goods from the start. I didn't, I don't know if I knew that he had a back injury or whatever it was, you know, when he was drafted. If so, that might have been a bad, you know, uh, draft pick. There's definitely other players that we could have took at that spot. But, and, that, and that's a part of the reason why I kind of wanted it to work out, you know, because he showed a little bit of promise. You know, I've seen some of his, you know, I watched some of his condensed games. Up at UW and everything. He looked like he could, you know, play some football. But, you know, back is, is kicking his ass more than he can kick other people's ass. So, um, Levi Enrique out for the rest of the season, guys. What are your thoughts, if you have any? I'm, I'm not surprised this happened. Levi has been dealing with that injury. Like, we're talking about going back to his days at Washington. Now, Jim and I, we before the draft class last year, we did profile Levi Enrique as one of the prospects for the Lions. And, we were impressed with his tape. We looked at him. We kind of like looked at what he did out there. And he was one of the highly touted defensive uh tackle defensive ends coming out of that out of the Pac 12. Yeah, it's it's just yeah, it's one of those things, man. Because and people talk about this all the time. Well, Brad Holmes, you know, draft injured players. Everybody that plays football is injured. You know what I'm saying? Everyone has an injury. You know what I'm saying? They get hurt, some doing something to play. No one's unscathed hundred percent in playing from playing football this even goes back to high school that if, if that's the case high schools wouldn't have trainers 
You know what I'm saying? They have a training staff. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, like colleges, you know, they ain't the same like type of level of professionalism, but they have medical staff that's on the sidelines at, at high school football, even down to the lowest levels, you know what I'm saying? Even with, with some of the peewee uh, footballs, they have mm-hmm. to have some medical people on, you know, on staff. And I hate to see that happen. And speaking from personal experience, back issues can be chronic, uh, even with surgery. You know, I've had, I have three screws in my back, man. And there's still days, especially, you know, that old wives tell, man, it's true. It's cold weather, man. My back is stiffens up mm. like a mug. I have to drive my, my wife car, got the heated seats. If it's, if it's wintertime, I, I'm already new. My wife said, Hey, I'm taking your car today. Cause I got to get that though heated those that, that heating pad on my back so it can be nice and warm when I you know get out the car because if I'm not my back will be locked up. I'm not sure that Levi will have a quality career in this league at this point. I, I'm just not sure. You know, I, I'm not convinced of it just because of the fact that it's a collision sport and anything you're running at you you're in the trenches too like. That's something that your back, how easy your back can get twists you know, on the defensive line on the offensive line, you know, making a block or trying to um, trying to get towards, you know, trying to uh, do and make an aggressive move and try to move somebody. So he's two hundred ninety five pounds. He's trying to move a guy that's three seventy at the defense as a defensive. Uh, I mean, as an offensive guard or you know, or a center. He's trying to move somebody that's you know that's a lot heavier than he is, and you know that's not a good thing for someone's back. But I hope that's not the case. I hope you can come back for for some time. But that long that long road to recovery is ahead, and I'm not sure if he will be able to come back from that injury. What you got, Coach Jones? Yeah, this, this news it, it hits me a little bit different, just because Levi Enrique has my jersey number from high school. He has my he he has my nickname from high school. I was the enforcer. Um, Levi's the enforcer. He number 75. I was well, number he switched, 75. right? He switched yeah, he to Brockers. Switched, yeah. He switched yeah. to Brockers, well, yeah, even yeah, though the, yeah, but... the graphic says 75, but it, yeah. he he never had a chance to play a game with number, number 91. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it uh, you know, but thing, the but thing about that is you never know with a back injury because Stafford was out for half a season with, with the broken vertebrae. Uh, mm-hmm, yeah. So, you just never know how that how it, it it'll come back, man. Um, you know, we can just hope for the best, man. But uh man, that that just hurts the depth uh on the D line, man. Mm-hmm. Levi was uh I think he was gonna be something, man, on this D line, man. So it's just on him and his recuperation of of how he takes it, man. It's kind of the same thing with, with Romeo O'Cora. Like it's just Depends on the mentality that you have when you attacking your rehab, man. And and it is possible for him to come back. Um, this is not like a hundred percent sure that, you know, but he's gonna have to he's gonna have to rest it and and let it totally heal. Mm-hmm. Like he can't be out there like J Mo was, you know, a week after surgery trying to run forties. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna have to he's gonna have to like seriously let that back heel right. all, all the way, let it, you know what I'm saying, and then attempt uh, maybe next off season to, to work itself back into shape, man. So mm-hmm. it just it just all depends, man. Um, you know, but the I hope, I hope, I hope that everything is all good with him, man, because we, we really need him. We really miss him out there. Yeah. I, do, does any do we know what the back injury was? I, I was trying to find it. I couldn't find an exact. I think um, Dan Campbell said yesterday that. it was a, a disc injury. Yes. Okay, I think it's what so, that's, okay. that's what Dan Campbell said in the presser yesterday. So, um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. like like Coach Mike said, though, you know, of course, I'm I'm hopeful that he can play. But a lot of times with these, you know, back injuries, it just never straightens itself out. They were saying that, um, you know, he was trying to avoid surgery this whole time. You know, I try to do, you know, what you like, the exact thing that you just said, Coach Mike, like let it rest. You know, like, you know, natural thing, you know, work his way, you know, try mm-hmm. to make yourself more comfortable with it, things like that. It just didn't. And this was the last yeah. resort for him. Yeah, so, that's, what um, Dan, that's what Dan Campbell said. It's, it's the last resort. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So, you know, don't necessarily like it because of that. But um, if you like our content, if you wish that our friend Le- Levi Onzerike does uh, have a, a little bit of playing time here in Detroit, go ahead and mm-hmm. throw some of them thumbs up. Go ahead and like this content. Go ahead and share it with your friends. Um, you know, let everybody else know that's out there. If you got a cowboy friend in your in your group, 
at work. Go ahead and let them know about the uh, video as well, because we're going to talk a whole lot. Well, I'm going to talk a whole lot of shit about them as we go uh, a little bit by. So, you know, go ahead and join the proud. We're on the march to a million, but the next stop is 4K. So go ahead and join us. We all here. We all family. We all nice people around here. So go ahead and throw us a like, throw us a subscribe, and stick around a little bit. Um, what's the family discussion topic for today, Kurt? All right, the family discussion topic for today is Will Levi ever play again for the Lions? Tell us what you think, man. Drop us what you think. Answer the question in the comment section of the video. And you know how we do it. We read comment cards in the next show. So today we have another abbrevi another abbreviated uh, comment cards. But, you know, drop us a like. Drop us a comment, man. We appreciate you right here on Detroit Lions on the Pride. Yo, home for Detroit Lions news and rumors, man. Hey, go on over to Lions Nation Unite and check us out over there. They help us bring you this content, man. And, you know, while you're over there, you can check us out. Dosa Dion, Micro Mike, Rad, Rota Lions UK, all your favorite Detroit Lions uh, content creators are right there in the Lions Nation Unite app. You can download the mobile app in the Google, Android, or Apple App Store, or you can just go to LionsNationUnite.com on your web browser. While you're over there, go ahead and get yourself some Lions Nation Unite gear over there at LNUShop.com. Don't buy the bootleg stuff that's out there on Facebook. Get the real deal, McCoy, man, <laughs> right there. Over there on LNUShop.com. Go to Detroit Lions on the Prowl.com to hang out and get more content from us over there. While you're over there, get yourself some Prowl Nation gear at Lions on the Prowl Shop.com. Man, now Coach Mike, he has a special announcement about Wolver Lion. Go ahead, Coach Mike, and do your thing about that, brother. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm giving away an autographed Wolver Lion shirt from none other than Braylon Edwards. Oh, yeah. Braylon now with autographed the Wolf Lion shirt. Now, I'm having the giveaway, man. All you got to do is follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And this Friday, I'm going to pick somebody, man, and I'm going to send you that, that Braylon now with autographed Wolf Lion shirt, man. So, hey, share the post, man. And, uh, hey, join join in, man. And, hey, you never know. Braylon now with shirt autographed my show up at your doorstep, man. Yeah, man, that's what's up. Hey, you know, Wolverine.com, get yourself some of that Wolverine gear over there at Wolverine.com. My man, Coach Jones, is going to hook you up. Man, make sure you go over and check it out, the uh, Roll Up gear, man. You know it's cancer wearing this month. And my man, Lion Man, and Latimer, he does his thing, man. He has the Roll Up gear. That link's in the description below. And get yourself some Roll Up gear. The proceeds from that, sales of that gear, go to help the American Cancer Society of Michigan. So get yourself some roll up gear, man. Support my dude, Big Lion Man. Y'all know him, man. Y'all see him all over the billboards, all over the Detroit metro area uh with the Lions, man. So go ahead and check out my man over there at Roll Up. Links in the description. Now, it's time to talk about the game because you know, we, it's Cowboys week, man. The bye is over and the Lions are opening up as seven point underdogs going into the game versus the Cowboys. Now, you look at this game, like I said, there's seven-point underdogs going into Dallas. The over-under for the game is a combined 48 points. The money line for the game for the Lions, if you bet $100, you'll win $250. The betting line for the Cowboys is uh, a negative 325, meaning if you bet on the Cowboys, you have to bet $320 to get $100. The Lions are 3-2 and two against the spread, and the Cowboys are 4-2 and two against the spread this season, which is the same as their record. So as their record goes, that's how their record is against the spread. What do you guys think about the Cowboys opening up at seven-point favorites versus the Lions? I think it's justified. Um, you know, when you're four and two and and you've been playing as well as you've been playing, that defense is legit. And uh and they're actually getting Zeke back on track. He was he's actually making some plays last game. Um, you know, they got Gallup healthy. Um, he, he's back at it. CD Lamb is back at it. Um, you know, uh, I mean, it's justified, man. Uh, a touchdown underdog is, is, that's what it is, man. Um, the Lions have fell short, so I'm surprised that it's not like a 10 point underdog. So, mm -hmm. you know, you know, it's, but it, but it, it's up to us, man. It's up to the Lions to prove that you know we're here and we we mm -hmm. back, man. So we it's by a week, we a little bit healthier, man. We just gotta go out and play. Hopefully by Thursday, that number is a little less. 
It might go up, like you said, though, Coach Mike. I don't know, man. I guess we'll see. I wonder, like, of course, I know that players see stuff like that. I just, mm-hmm. like, I want to, I want to get to where I can interview a player. That's going to be one of my interview questions. Cause, like, what do you think when you see stuff like that? When you see something like that, like, does that make you? I know, I know, you want to go out there and win anyway. So nothing is is going to necessarily motivate you more than your actually your internal want to win. But like, mm-hmm. what does that do? Like, does that make you want to, you know, what I'm saying, go out there and you know prove these people wrong or whatever it is? Cause I, me, I, I don't, I don't like the slights. Like, I don't like when, when people when they just always they're, they're just playing Detroit. Like they've been talking about Dallas this whole time. And when Dak could come back, and a lot of them, they, they speak about Detroit. Some people, oh, they just playing Detroit, so you could bring them back then. I just, I don't like a lot of this stuff, man. So hopefully, you know, this week we go out there and, um, you know, we were pretty good against the spread last year. So hopefully we can go out there, you know, beat this spread. Um, hopefully we can, I think we actually got a real good shot to win this game. I'm not sure if we will, though. Um, mm-hmm. This season has, has gotten me a little bit jaded in that area, but. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think this game we go out there and win, man. Some fun and all. We could definitely, um, we could definitely make that up. And we can win this game. I, I think the betting, the betting crowd has as looking at the New England game as an anomaly as far as points is concerned. So they're looking at the Lions still, even after the buy. I think they're still, we're still like the third ranked scoring offense in the league. So mm-hmm. you look at that. I think they're they're looking at the New England game as yeah. You know, that was a, you know, we crapped the bed. Hopefully that was just a one-off thing. So, you know, hopefully, I hope I hope that's the case. But, you uh, know. I kind of, I, I kind of, go ahead, Mike. We probably think the same. Go ahead. Oh, somebody mentioned something yesterday, man. I forgot which was on ESPN and NFL Network, but, man, but I don't think this game is the game that the Cowboys want to try and bring Dak back um, just because mm. we score a lot of points. And do you really want to put Dak out there when he has to, you know, when he got to do a lot? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, mm-hmm. I mean, if you look at, at Philly, Jalen Hurts had to do a lot. Um, you look at uh, Minnesota, Kirk Cousins, mm-hmm. you know, and, and and so on and so forth, man. I just don't think it's the game, you know, where he can really just relax into the game. I think Dak is going to have to be on top of his game. I don't know if this is the game really to bring him back like that, man. So, Actually, no. I'm look. I'm looking forward to him bringing them back because you look at it. Cooper Cooper Rush has has a rhythm with that team, and yeah, now you're yeah. messing with the ry- ry- rhythm by bringing Dak Prescott. Now, I'm not saying that um, that Cooper Rush is a better quarterback than Dak Prescott, and, and no means and no way in shape or form am I am I saying that. What I'm saying is that once a team has an established rhythm, when you bring a, a especially a, a piece back like a Dak Prescott, the quarterback. It can mess up the rhythm of the team, especially the offense. So I'm saying, hey, bring him back. Bring him back. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, um, you know, hopefully like, he does he he doesn't catch a rhythm with his rest of his offense. What you got, man? Um, I like the thought that they will hopefully they put ball to the wall and you know, and there is no rhythm at all. But um one of the one of the smarter things that I heard them say was when they bring him back, don't change the game plan. You know, run a similar game plan, things like that. If they do that, then I feel like that could fair for us, you know, because they don't do a whole lot. They run the ball, you know, they 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 do a lot of simple things for Cooper Rush to do. But what I was gonna add was um I think that's I think they they are taking the New England game into consideration because in no way mm-hmm. or either or either they're overstating the line or they overstating the Cowboys defense because that's a big that's definitely our, our biggest opening uh deficit right this this season seven points. Right? No, I think or it, was, I, it was it was it matches no it was Philly. There was seven and a half point favorites. Okay. It was okay. Philly. Philly was but, seven and a half. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I feel like if if they if they took it to you know consideration our offense versus their defense, I feel like it should be where it might be a little bit smaller. But maybe either they are saying our our offense ain't gonna get it done, or their defense is gonna play real well in this game. That's how I take it. Yeah. Hey, um, it's one of those things, man. I think that um, I hope we can cover. Um, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a tough game to pick for me. You know what I'm saying? Um. You you look at this game. It's the you know, it's kind of like our it's a strength on strength, man. As far as the uh, our offense versus their defense, and it's kind of weakness on weakness. Their offense versus our defense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah. it, it kind of yeah. is what it is, man. But hey, man, thank you guys for checking us out right here on Detroit Lions on the prowl. Y'all home for Detroit Lions news and rumors, man. Hey, do us a favor, man. You keep coming back if you haven't done so already the notification bell man subscribe to the channel drops a comment man 
right in the comment section of the video. You know, we're going gonna to do your thing in the live chat, but go ahead and leave us a comment on the video. We'd like to hear from you guys, and we pick comments to read on the next show, man. So go ahead and do us a favor, and it helps us with that YouTube alg algorithm, man. And if you want to just know when we got fresh content, hit the notification bell, man, so you know when you're getting that fresh video from right here on Detroit Lions on the crowd. Yeah. Man, now it's time for my man, Coach Jones. Man, he got a question for everybody. What you got, Coach Jones? Yeah, do you think that six or seven wins is out of the question now for the Detroit Lions? And my answer is it is not because we still have the fifth easiest schedule in the NFL. Um, our two toughest games uh, left on the schedule are at home, uh, Miami and Buffalo. Those are the mm -hmm. two toughest games that we have left on our schedule, and they're at home. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so really what that is is we play we play five games, so we have mm -hmm. 12 left. So we got to go 500 um, in those mm -hmm. games. And we can win. We can, like I said, with the fifth easiest schedule in the NFL, we can win half of those games. I know people are like, the hat, like, yeah, we can win half of those games with that mm -hmm. subpar uh, – opponent schedule man so you know it is it, not it's not looking good as of now but having this early by benefits us to kind of reassess our situation get people back healthy and go into this this uh this strong push of the season healthier and, and more focused and readjusted man so what do y'all think about that six win that they had, I had them at seven. I still got seven wins because I mm -hmm. think we can we can knock out half of these. Yeah, I looked at this. I'm still around seven wins uh, with the proper adjustments on defense. And if the Lions offense recovers from that New England loss, I believe the Lions can still get seven wins. I believe that. Um, and it's not about the schedule because, you know, I hear what you're saying, Coach Mike. But you know what it has to do for me? It has to do with the team's belief in itself. You know, they have to start believing again. They have to start buying in, you know, and play up to their own standard. MTDC said that he has made some suggest some some adjustments, excuse me, to practices. He's ramped up the competition. And he and AG has made some adjustments to the defensive scheme. To let some players move around more instinctively and just kind of fly around. I think six and seven, six to seven wins, actually seven wins is achievable for the Detroit Lions. Um, and it's not Kool-Aid drinking, man. You, once you, you know, you have a couple bad losses like that, you stop believing in yourself. And I think that that, that, that bye week gives them a chance to kind of re, uh, reset and readjust their mindset and get themselves back on track. What you got, Ella? Those two back-to-back -back losses kind of made me lose a little bit of hope. Um, mm -hmm. I, in the beginning, I was saying <laughs> at least seven. I still think seven is easily um, – uh, well, is obtainable. I'm not going to say easily. But mm -hmm. if, for the reason that Coach Mike just said, we got 12 of them left. We should be able to win six of them, man. Um, and y'all know I'm not even one for – well, I am one for calling for people's jobs. But I really I really do like Dan Campbell. I really do like the group that they got here. But it's like – what you got to do? Like, what is you going to do? Like, I forget the stat, but it's like we lost having – we lost at least, was it six games or seven games last year by, by less than – or by one score. Or, mm -hmm. you know, how many of them by last second scores and things like that. So – you know, I, coming into this season, I thought things would be different, and it hasn't. And it hasn't been this year. And I don't. I haven't really seen too many hopeful signs that it will change. But I still do think that seven is more of a ceiling now instead of a floor. So we could get to seven. Um, you know, it, depending on how we struggle, man. A lot of things. Well, a lot of things are already under review. But depending on how we struggle to get to whatever we end with, a lot of things got to be under review. I just feel like you know. Dan Campbell has to tighten up his his uh, decision making. I think with these players coming back and everybody getting healthy, and we don't know when Jay will return, but that'll add to the offense. Um, I just I just think Dan Campbell got to tighten up his part. Yeah, of, I, of I don't think the, the offense is the issue though. I don't think the offense is the right. issue. It's the right. it's that defense, man. And I don't think. I don't think Aaron Glenn had the horses to play that scheme he wanted to do on defense. I just don't think he had it. You know, so he didn't have the players to do that to go switch to a four three. You're gonna have to yeah. go back to a, th a three four. I mean, but that that leaves us even more vulnerable because now we need four dependable linebackers. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, I feel you. Like, we, ain't, we ain't got it, bro. Yeah, <laughs> we ain't. 
Mm. I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know what I'm saying? It's going to have to be more of a hybrid than what, we'll, you know, but we'll see. We'll see. Definitely. Right. Hey, uh, you know what I'm saying? Hey, thank you for joining us right here on Detroit Lions on the Prowl, your home for Detroit Lions news and rumors, man. Now it is time for us to zip our lip and go to my sa- favorite segment of the show. It's time for the comment cards, man. We had three of them, so we we're going to do an abbreviated comments cards like we did yesterday. So first up, uh, as my man Lyle Show says, I listened to Micro Mike and could hear him, but I can't hear you. Turn up your mics. Okay, kind of made of adjustments uh, this morning. Uh, I hear you, Lyle Schultz, uh, and then we have someone else that they only could hear through one speaker, but uh, we had some issues with the editing yesterday as well and getting it uploaded oh. on time, so we will make sure that everything is straight today. Um, another thing, shout out to Micro Mike, but Micro Mike be yelling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, on, we on Top Doe 100 says, uh, welcome back, We on Top Doe 100 says, um, enjoyed the show, guys. Glad you feeling better, Kurt. Thank you. Definitely agreed that the Lions don't make any more or make any moves uh, before deadline. Thanks again for your commentary, Coach Mike and LL. I look forward to you to all you guys take each and every week. God bless you guys and your family. Go Lions! Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. you God bless you and yours that. as well. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you, man. That, Thank that, you. That's much appreciated, man. That's much love, much love and respect. Uh, Shaman says, "Glad to see you guys are back." I believe John Kaminsky will be our biggest help with the returning players so that we can get more pressure on the line and make our DB jobs easier. I do agree because Kaminsky, he, he's a underappreciated person, man, uh, in the Lion Nation. Also, we need Romeo quarterback too. Man, I'm telling you, man, that I, that's been bothering me so much. <laughs> so much. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's been, man, that's striking a nerve, man. Like, Roman, yeah, man, I ain't going to speak on it. Uh, I like what Aiden is doing, but man needs a break, and he needs to be swapped out with someone as dominant as him, like Romeo, and that's hopefully Josh Pascal uh, returning. Uh, hopefully Josh can bring, you know, the extra little sup, man, and then uh, – because we're supposed to have depth at that DM, man. Now, it's supposed to be Aiden, Charles Harris, Julian O'Cora, Romeo, like we, uh, Austin Bryant. We're supposed to have a full rotation there, man. So, you know, it, it, it is what it is, man. But thank you for your comment, Shaman, and thank you for everybody's comment. Hey, y'all need to start leaving more comments, man. Like, don't be scared. Don't be scared, man. Leave a comment, man. But if you like this content, like the video, subscribe. Share the video, help us get this content out to more Lions fans like yourself. And, you know, you can watch it on different laptops, cell phones, whatever, whatever, man. But uh, what's up next, Kurt? All right, now it's time for everyone else's favorite segment of the show. It's called Dessert with your man, Kurt, brought to you by Delightful Bites. Custom cookies and desserts for any occasion. If you like how they look, you'll love how they taste. Go on over to Delightful Bites 18 over there on Facebook. Links in the description below. If you don't do the Facebook thing, you can check her out on TikTok. Or Instagram, man, and check out all that beautiful dessert footage. Delightful bites. Get your cooking on. Let's talk about the the guy we just talked about. John Kaminsky looked like he's back on track to be in the lineup versus the Cowboys this week. And that is a good thing for our defensive line. You look at the pressure he the pressure he provides, and he takes players away from Aiden Hutchinson. They got that thing for me, I think it's one of the biggest things that he does is that especially when they had a NASCAR package, you lined up Charles Harris and you lined him up in there with uh, Kaminsky and Aiden Hutchinson. That was a formidable uh, line to deal with, man. And you can, you know, he, he his pass rushing ability is good. So and he takes the pressure off the young fella. So uh, hopefully we can get uh, Kaminsky back. You, you know, so you said swipe in Josh Pascal and you have the big fellas in there with, with Bugs and, and O'Neal. I mean, you, I mean, excuse me, Neil I mean, McNeil. You're gonna have some good play at the defensive line. So, welcome back, John Kaminsky. Hope we can get him back, man. And you looking at it? Uh, hopefully, we can get uh, Romeo Aquara. From what Dan Campbell was saying, he should be back sometime this year. And hopefully, we can get JMO in the building as well. Um, I'm hoping to see, he say he will have another update on Wednesday if we can get some of those other guys back. But of course, we know Pascal and um, and Jerry Jacobs are going to be back in the lineup this week. Uh, of course. All right. That's your dessert with your man, Kurt. Brought to you by Delightful Bites. Custom cookies and desserts for any occasion. If you like how they look, you'll love how they taste. Delightful Bites. Get your cookie on. All right. Now it's time to take that quick walk on over to the wall of fame, baby. All right. First up, we got my man, Marcus King. He is the everything king. So go ahead and check him out. David Anderson, my man Q. Shane on the Insano. 
Bob Korowski and my man Dan Spanos in our bronze member groups. In our silver members group, we got my man Cap Ice Cold, Batman of the 313, Henry Rollins, and Mr. Scott of the Bear, the Frenchman. Ha ha ha, baguettes and all that. For our gold members, we got my man Michael Huck, Mr. Reliable's in the building, Larry McQuist, and my man North and Ken is kicking it. Michael Lewis, Lionel of Douche Baggia, she holds it down. Go check her out. Dominic Davis and the doctor, Dr. Detroit. He is always in. To become a member of the Wall of Fame, click that join now button in the description. Now it's time for final thoughts for today's show, man, on this Two-Piece Tuesday, Taco Tuesday. Before we get to final thoughts, man, make sure you go ahead and check us out on your favorite social media platforms. You know what I'm saying? Like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. You know what I'm saying? It's Tuesday, so we're two days away from Thursday Thursdays over there on LL's uh, Instagram page. So make sure you go over there and check that thing out, man. But now it's time for final thoughts, man. LL, what you got for today's show, brother? It is another great Tuesday amongst the internet as well, but you know, um, happy $2 Tuesday, Taco Tuesday, or Two-Piece Tuesday, however you do it on this Tuesday. Have a great day. Um, good morning, all that good stuff. Um, this, we, uh, Kurt always talks about it, but mental health, um, you know, awareness and everything like that. Um, we're heading into, you know, getting dark early, heading into colder, colder temperatures, things like that. Uh, for a lot of people that may spell seasonal depression, I haven't necessarily been diagnosed, but I definitely feel a mood switch, you know, with the changing of the season, what's mm -hmm. going into getting cold. So, you know, do what you got to do to feel like you, whatever that is, you know, find some, some good, funny things to look at, find some interesting things to read. Just keep your mind clear and stay above it all. Yeah, piggybacking off that, it was cold as hell yesterday. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, we, we was at football practice, man. I was like, damn, I got to wear two pairs of socks already. Um, I mean, my clothes was cold. Uh man, I was I was not I was not comfortable last night. I'm just gonna be I'm gonna be for real with you. I ain't trying to be uh -huh. soft enough, man. It was I was like uh, cold is cold. I'm uncomfortable right now. <laughs> but <laughs> you know what, man? Uh this is always a good time of year because as you know, Mike Jones Sr. is a lifelong cowboy fan. I'm gonna post a pic on, on Twitter and Instagram uh -huh. and, and TikTok and all of that, man. And uh you know, when we went to the, the Lions Cowboy game a couple years ago, man, and you know, Mike Jones Jr., I'm a Lions fan, man. So, you know, he he probably gonna be calling me every day of the week talking that that Ezekiel Elliott nonsense and, and and all of that other nonsense and that C D Lamb and all of that. You know, I don't know, I don't even want to hear it, man. But uh, you know, so get ready, man. And uh hey, if you watching, man, we're gonna get you. Yeah, man, not Ezekiel Elliott, the troll doll. Anyway, all right, for me, man, make sure you take care of yourself, man. Take care of us. It is still October. We're looking at cancer awareness, um, health month. Go ahead, man. Ladies, get the mammograms done. Fellas, get your prostate check. Everyone, get your colon check, man. Hey, we'd rather have you here than, uh, you know what I'm saying, than passing away from cancer, you know, catching it too late. You know what I'm saying? Be safe all the year round. You know what I'm saying? If you have a, you know, something on your skin, get that checked out, man. Skin cancer is one of those things that can get you as well. Make sure you wear the proper SPF, man. If you're taking vacations during the winter month, getting coming out here to the south, because I ain't gonna lie to you, it was warm here. It was 82 degrees yesterday. So <laughs> in North Carolina, so, you know, it is what it is, what it is, but it's gonna get cold the rest of the week. Uh, we're cold nah, But anyway, man, make sure you take care of yourself. Take care of your loved ones, man. And like, and like I'll say, man, mental health is a issue all year long, especially during the you looking at the holiday season that's coming up. If you know someone that's by themselves, man, reach out, give them a hand, man. You know what I'm saying? And if you're one of those people that's by yourself, find you find yourself some family, some friends to get, go around, man, and be joyful during the holiday season. But look for those people who don't, ha you know, they they usually don't have anyone. They're a loner. Reach a kind hand to them and say, hey, man, you know, you can hang out with us for the holidays, you know. Was one more plate or one more setting, or you know, because sometimes, man, it's that extra thing, man, that can get people through uh, to the next next day. Uh, and sometimes that's all they're looking for is to get to the next day. If they can get to the next day, they'll be okay. So, uh, that being said, man, thank you for checking us us out right here on Detroit Lions on the Prowl. Yo, home for Detroit Lions news and rumors, man. It's two piece Tuesday. It's Taco Tuesday. Whatever you have for lunch, man, you know what you got to do for your boy. <laughs> 
crumbs off your face, man. Finish your drink and get back to work, baby. And whatever you're doing in life, you know what you got to do. You got to boss up. Bow out and be the best version of you that you can be. For my fellas, LL and Coach Mike, this is Kurt Steele, and we will holler at you real soon. We love you, Jim.